Jermaine Pennant, let's dive back into the football. Your former team, Arsenal, go to Aston Villa on Saturday. Um, will this game define the narrative around both sides' title challenges? Um, listen, the Villa fans telling us a little bit earlier on, we shouldn't really be speaking about Villa. It's a bit too soon. <clears throat> All right, we did have one saying, look, this is one of the most formidable sides that he has seen um, in terms of, of Aston Villa's recent history. But um, I think it might ultimately be more about Arsenal. Yeah. You know, if Arsenal are beaten at Villa, people will kind of say, are they the team that we thought they were? Listen, I take nothing away from Aston Villa's performance. It was it was amazing. You know, the, in the wildest dreams, did anyone see that coming? Uh, a performance like that to keep them, Man City, two, two shots. And also, I don't think we'll see an off day. Teams, great teams can have, have off days. Mm -hmm. And Man City also... On top of their great performance for Aston Villa, had an off day. It happens. That's football. So, to talk about are they title content? I think that's a bit rich. It's a bit much, and I don't. I think people need to get a bit ahead of themselves. Arsenal go into there. It's going to be. It will see where Arsenal are. If Arsenal go and get a result, then yes, Arsenal are making moves and are a lot better than where they were last season and more equipped to really challenge and win the Premier League. Saying that, if Aston Villa, you know, put in another performance like that, but I don't think, if even if Aston Villa put in a great performance, I don't think they will nullify Arsenal as much as the way it affected Man City. Well, what's so good for you about Arsenal? Um, I think one thing that hasn't been mentioned, I know we got a message a little bit earlier on, excuse me, I can't, oh, no name on it, but someone says it's funny no one's mentioned Kai Havertz this week. A few people have. Yeah. It's a couple of goals in midweek. Um, having much more on effect on matches. If anything, it's his best form for quite some time, given how things went for him at Chelsea as well for a period. Um, he's just affecting games a little bit more. He's becoming more settled in that side. Um, are you impressed by what uh, he's do doing what? at the moment? I, I, I'm, I'm always quick to congratulate people. And I was one of those people who was saying probably the worst signing that they've made so far and I don't understand why they spent 60 million still now where is his best position but he's coming trumps he's repaying that those goals that were the goal against Brentford that could be a winning title goal there is one more thing that I wanted to mention when it comes to the game between Arsenal and Villa at the weekend and that is Declan Rice who yeah. scored that late goal and all the headlines were written about him. And I have to say, he had a good performance, solid performance. He's excellent virtually every week. You get a good 8 out of 10 yeah. from Declan Rice every time you see him. I felt that when he was at West Ham United yeah. as well. I'm a huge fan of his. We spoke about the leadership and responsibility that he took in a West Ham shirt and he's doing it again for the Arsenal. But I'd say that there were a number of players in the last 15 minutes of that game for Arsenal that made me feel confident throughout that they would win that match. I thought Trossard, what he brought to the game late on, you know, he's throwing himself at absolutely everything. I thought Saka showed so much quality. Uh, Martin Erdegaard in the closing stages just to it was keep him, them it, him for me. pushing Luton further and further back. Every time you he, think Rice he, is most responsible? No, no, no. Erdegaard, every time he got oh. on the ball, every time he got on the ball, he picked the right pass. It was a cutting pass and something that, you know, a chance was going to be created from it. And I thought that he was instrumental the whole game. Um, that it's, it's creativity, his eye for, for the detail. And like I said, that, you know, you know, Rice's goal, if it wasn't for him being on that pitch, that ball, the quality of it would not be coming in. So a lot of it's down to Odegaard as being the, the main man. I wouldn't say Rice. You know, Rice is a... Any team would be, you know, a dream to have. But there is better sixes in the Premier League at the moment. Name one. I'll say Douglas Louise of Aston Villa. Of Aston Villa, I, th I think he, he he can do everything that that Rice can do and better. I think he's he assists more. He chips in with goals more than Rice. Creativity wise, he's better. Flair is better, and he, he can put in a tackle just like Rice. Break up play just like Rice. So I think if someone said to me, you can have Douglas Louise for sixty mil or Declan Rice for a hundred. Easy every day of the week. Douglas Louise. Wow. Okay, they'll go head to head this weekend in the Premier League. Declan Rice versus Douglas Louise. Aston Villa versus Arsenal. 5.30 on Saturday. Going to be a crucial one in terms of 
uh, the title hopes for Arsenal. I'll say the top four hopes for Aston Villa, but they can dream of that title, especially if they take all three points at the weekend, because that would put them just a point behind Arsenal after 16 matches of this Premier League season, and it's turning into a very, very good one. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app, and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.